Hello everyone. In this tutorial, what we're going to discuss is how to set up a 3D connection device inside of LightWave 11.5, and we're going to use that connection device as a form of navigation for our lights, cameras, objects, or just in the perspective view. Now for those of you who don't know what a 3D connection device is, right here is the most basic form. It's the original Space Mouse by 3D Connection, and it works great for navigation. I'm going to be demonstrating on the Space Mouse Pro, thank you 3D Connection, but the Space Mouse does everything that the Space Mouse Pro does in terms of navigation, and you can get it online for about 80 bucks, and it works great. The 3D Connection devices are powered through USB, so go ahead and plug that in as step number one. Then in Layout, hit the D key to open up the Preferences, Go to the Navigation tab, and under Device, you will now see 3D Connection. We can go ahead and select that, and you can see that our mode is currently set to Current Item. Down here under Current Item for Objects, we have None. So if we move the puck around, nothing is going to happen. If we switch the mode to View, and then move the puck around, you can see that it's instantly working. If we switch it to Current Item, and select the camera, you can see that we're now moving the camera around. We could hit the 6 key to go inside the camera view and also navigate like that. Go back to perspective by hitting the 4 key. We can then select the light and also move the light around and hit the 5 key to go into the light and do the same thing as we did in the camera. To explain these other settings, I'm just going to open up a architectural scene. First of all, the LightWave 3D group would like to thank Dosh Design for providing this beautiful scene for us to showcase in this tutorial. You can check out some more of their work at doshdesign.com. So let's go back into the Preferences, go to the Navigation tab, and you can see that our connection device is selected. Our mode is currently set to Current Item, and we have the camera selected. So if we move the puck around now, you can see that it's working as you would expect. But let's cover a few of these settings. What does the dominant access do? Well, that basically uses the direction of the puck movement that is the greatest. So if we check that and we move the puck around, you can see that it's very easy to move in straight lines or side to side. It basically just favors uh, whichever direction you're moving in that is the greatest. The TX, TY, and TZ is translate on the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And the rx, ry, and rz is rotation. Now, you're probably wondering why it's not HPB values. And that's because it's the axis of the puck. So the x would be moving to the right and to the left. And the y would be moving up and down. And the z would be moving forward and backward. And if we uncheck any of these, we will not be working with them. So for instance, if I don't want to be rotating the camera on the bank, I could just uncheck RZ. And now when I navigate through, I'm moving the puck to the left and right, but I am not rotating on the bank. That's very useful. The sensitivity allows the gentle movements to be less effective. So if we decrease this, it will slow down uh, how fast we're moving. And what the scale does is then amplifies the effect after the sensitivity uh, has been applied. So obviously people are going to be controlling the pucks differently from others, so these settings will vary for each individual, but these are the defaults. The ground is a cool option because you can see right now if we raise the puck up and down that we start going through the ground. If we check ground, you can see that it stops at zero meters but we can then raise this up to say 500 millimeters and then it'll stop right on top of the ground so we no longer are going through it. So that's a good thing to keep on. The travel style default is fly. It's basically a free movement and allows you to uh, essentially just do anything. What walk will do is limit the rotation for like a head moving up and down on a character. And orbit is very similar to modeler's arc ball movement once you're rotating around a model using the hotkeys. We also have a mode for the timeline, so we can control the timeline using the puck. Just select that. 
and you can see that we can easily skip through uh, all the various frames. So once all that is set up and you know how to use it, you're ready to just play around and navigate through your scene. It's very easy for, uh, in previs, a director to come over and just you know get the best camera movement or a DP, it's a director of photography. And let's go ahead and play with some of these settings now. Uh, I'm gonna lower the sensitivity to about 30%. and see how that feels. You can see it, it is slower now. And I'm also gonna lower the scale to about four, just for the translation now. Come over here. This beautiful scene, again, provided by Dosh Design. Now what you'll notice is that the rail seems to be getting cut off. An easy way to fix that is to go into the preferences again. And under display, we could just check fixed near clip distance. Once we check that, you can see we can get a lot closer to the pole without having it clipped. So that's basically everything there is to know about setting up your 3D connection device inside of Lightwave 11.5, becoming familiar with all the settings. And this is a great technique to use for a lot of different architectural design scenes. Again, thanks Dosh Design, and I will see you in the next tutorial.